Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Danny Ritchie here at GR Research. And again, we're doing all things DIY. Thanks for joining in. We have a lot of goodies to uh, go through today, but before we get started, I want to send a thank you out to Peter. Peter just sent us a new studio monitor cabinet to test and a base. And he sent us this little jewel right here, which it took me a little bit to kind of figure out what that was all about, but then it hit me and it was hilarious and I had to share it. You know, when we do all these upgrades and we upgrade these capacitors and inductors and resistors and wire and connectors and things, we're, we're making huge improvements in sound quality and there's still always those guys out there who don't believe that any of this stuff makes a difference. Uh, sometimes call those guys the naysayers or the flat earth guys. <laughs> We kind of poking at them when we call them that in a way it's it's in jest, but um, we call them flat earthers because they have a preconceived belief like that speaker cables can't possibly make a difference and they don't want to hear any evidence to the contrary. That's their belief and they're sticking with it and sometimes they want to throw stones at us for doing all these upgrades and making these improvements and uh, so we call them the flat earthers because uh, they're just like the guys who believe the earth is flat. They won't look at any evidence to the contrary. So Peter sent me this little globe. It's a cubicle globe. So now I have a, a little globe here for the flat earthers out there who may be watching. We have your, we have your globe also. So let's get started. Um, this week we looked at some of the ELAC stuff. And uh, one of the crossovers that we've had in here is from the debut model 5.2 and in this case the customer just sent us a crossover we mapped it out drew out a schematic and we can send now all the upgraded parts out for that speaker it's going to be the exact same crossover as came on the speaker but just with higher quality parts and this one was kind of clever it um, it has three of these woofers and uh, and this and the same tweeter and there's a network on the woofer and then at the end of that network there's a series network that splits the signal from the upper woofer to the two lower woofers which I thought was pretty clever it kind of made me think of some stuff that I would pull or try to do to make something like that work and it looked like that would work out pretty well so uh, kudos to uh, uh, Andrew Jones who I know did the crossover design work on these that was pretty clever and uh, so if you're interested in that crossover network just give us a call I'll total up all the parts and uh, get you everything you need for that now this one the uh, debut 2.0 uh, not a bad little speaker I, I really like this speaker it's got some good bones to it it's a perfect candidate to upgrade a lot of those budget speakers we've been looking at lately there's just not enough there I mean the parts quality of the, or the drivers themselves there's just there's just so far you can take it. Uh, you know, you go in and you put a bunch of high quality parts on it, but I'm having to fix things or the cost of it just so far exceeds what the speaker was worth to begin with. It's just not worth it. Sometimes it's better to start over. In this case, these things have really good bones. The drivers are really pretty nice drivers and uh, it's really worth doing the upgrade on these things. You can really take these from a budget level speaker to a really high level speaker by doing these upgrades. So uh, let's take a look at it. First of all, uh, pretty nice little box. There's one brace running through it, uh, but it's fairly lightly constructed. Uh, the no res that we're gonna recommend is definitely gonna help. It's gonna take away the resonances of the, uh, of the panels. It's going to tighten up the bass response, improve that vocal region. Um, that's just kind of a given. And this one, as you can see, is front ported. I know we've looked at some speakers lately that were front ported, some of the ushers, which had an issue with the noise and output from higher frequencies exiting the port and causing a disruption. Uh, the KEFs that we just looked at recently had a port resonance in the front port, and it was causing a problem in the spectral decay, some stored energy, it was a mess. This one that's front ported showed no issues at all. Uh, the output was pretty clean, no, no issues there. Uh, so don't worry about it being front ported. It works well in this model. Um, the tweeter is a pretty nice little tweeter, I have to admit. 
it's kind of it's loaded into this little waveguide and it has this um, kind of a, a wire, gr wire grill uh, over the front of it a little mesh to help protect it and I did initially measure it with that on it and then popped it off and it definitely measured smoother without it it's probably going to sound a little better not sending all your highs through that so a quick trick um, just reach in with something uh, like a little small screwdriver a little pick tool and just start pulling at it all around the outside gently and work its way off evenly and it just it pops right off so uh, no issues there uh, the rest of the measurements I took and the design that I worked on with these was with that cover off and like I said it's a little bit of a waveguide and this waveguide really helped uh, lift the the frequency range down low so it really picked that level up so it's allowing it to play down pretty low even with this pretty small capacitor value on it so it's still electrically very protected but the crossover point can go much lower now there was some throat cancellation that I could see going on right inside of the uh, um, inside the neck of it here and the throat of it uh, caused a little cancellation and it's causing a dip um, right there above 16 k hertz to 20 k hertz you can see it in the measured response there's a little bit of a dip and um, but overall the frequency response on these was was really smooth um, there was just one issue I had that was centered at 750 hertz there was a lump there just about a db and a half hump and that was in the woofer's response and I couldn't really figure out where it was coming from on the woofer it'd be great to be able to just fix it um, but it's there and uh, so I just had to work around that and try and resolve that issue I know that would get, add a little brightness right there in that 750 hertz area it would tend to get a little ringy uh, and you can see in the spectral decay there's a little bit of stored energy that uh, is hanging on there so there's a little bit of a resonance issue going on there um, not too bad it has a stamp steel frame which I'm not thrilled about and if you line these things with no res you can take a little of the no res strips when you're done little, cut some little pieces peel the foam off stick it on the back of the frame and it'll help control some of that ringing uh, but overall it's a fairly nice material and it had a nice amount of internal damping so it wasn't like there was a whole lot there to have to fix other than that one spot at 750 hertz so um, the rest of the measurements look pretty good the vertical off axis on these looked really good a lot of that due to the tweeter being able to play down fairly low they also overlap the tweeter to the woofer that's something I do with a lot of our designs they're getting those acoustic centers really close that with the higher crossover point had a really nice off-axis vertical response you could stand up even quite a bit and not lose the overall presentation it stays pretty consistent over that whole range that it's covering uh, the horizontal off-axis looked pretty good really didn't see uh, too much in the form of response issues it's a fairly smooth speaker the top end was tilted down just a little bit it's a little soft across the top um, and then just that hump at 600 or 750 hertz that uh, just bugged me to even look at I know that's going to be uh, eventually a little bit of brightness so what I did was instead of just copying the original network uh, which by the way used a little bitty iron core inductor on the woofer with the uh, dental floss gauge um, it used some electrolytic caps in the in the woofer circuit uh, sand cast resistors it did have a poly cap and an air core inductor on the tweeter circuit but for the most part these are your bottom of the barrel budget level parts and this is what they have to use in these speakers to to meet those price points in order to give it to you at you know at the bargain prices that these things are you're not going to get two or three hundred dollars worth of crossover parts uh, when you when you uh, purchase a speaker at those price points so uh, what we did was designed a new network the tweeter network is very similar to the, to the original I put um, a slightly larger capacitor on there let it play down just a little bit lower and uh, I think I may have gone a little bit smaller with the uh, inductor so it's a little steeper at the bottom as far as rolling it off but the overall uh, range is pretty similar to it was uh, originally uh, didn't do much change in there it, it now has 
uh, Sonic cap. It's got Mills resistor and the RC Iron Core, um, not Iron Core, the RC Air Core, um, high purity copper inductor. So lots higher quality parts quality there. You're going to get a lot more clarity detail level. You're going to hear things in the music that you never heard with the original network. I also bypassed the resistor with another Sonic cap. Uh, just to lift that top end because the top end had such a dipped area there up top that um, you know you're losing some of your spatial cues and stuff there so I bypassed it with another cap that lifted it about a DB so wasn't able to give it all back to you because the resistor level in line with it is only a 2 ohm resistor so it's only bringing it down a little bit so I could bypass that and bring that top back up just a hair that helped a lot and the, the woofer network is fairly simple. It's just a second order, basically. Um, it's got one resistor in line with the cap, but pretty easy. Um, the addition is that we des or I designed this notch filter for it, which is three more parts. And that notch filter addressed that issue right there at 750 hertz. So it knocked that level down. So let's take a look at the new measurements and uh, see how this thing's measuring up now if you if you look at the crossover response you see it's a fairly low crossover point thanks to this great little tweeter um, there was no issues at all with running it down to that range that's about where it was from the factory uh, just changed the slope on it just a little bit that little peak has been pulled down and the tweeter level overall has been brought up about a db so it's a lot flatter now if you look there's a frequency response measurement that i show um, of the original which you can see in red and the new frequency response which you can see in green which is a little smoother and that bump at 750 Hertz is gone if you look at the spectral decay it's a lot cleaner initially it drops off a little smoother there there's still that little bit of a resonance at that frequency that's there in the woofer's response but it's a little lower in level now thanks to the notch filter so it's going to be a lot smoother a lot easier to listen to and with the crossover point being slightly lower, the vertical off-axis is even better. It's as good as just about any speaker we've had in here as far as maintaining an even response over a wide range. They're excellent in that, uh, in that aspect. The horizontal off-axis uh, still looks really good. Uh, the impedance curve looks uh, about the same. We do drop about an ohm in impedance. It was at about 4.8 ohms, I think and now the lowest point is 3.8 ohms so it dropped a little because of this notch filter that I had to add to it to correct that little hump um, but that shouldn't be a problem anything that's rated to handle 4 ohms uh, most speakers that are rated at 4 ohms are probably going to dip to 3.6 3.5 ohms DCR to begin with this is a little above that but it's something to keep in mind if you're wanting to put a bunch of these on a home theater receiver or something uh, you know, a lot of those receivers don't like you ganging up a bunch of forum speakers. It's a little rough on the power supply and the current that it's having to deliver to those things. So keep that in mind if you're doing two channel. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem if your uh, amplification is stable to forums. Most of it is. Um, overall, yeah, I have to say the upgrade on this would be uh, relatively high. I mean, huge difference in performance, I would say, on this. And your overall performance when you're done with this should be pretty significant. I would say confidently the, these speakers you can compare to a lot of more expensive speakers uh, once you've gone through and upgraded these parts and a uh, huge bang for the buck. The total on everything uh, came to $345. That's for everything. That's all new parts. That's the tube connectors that you're going to use and that's the sheet of no res and all new wiring that's everything you need and again uh, when you install the tube connectors what you can do is uh, replace the binding post just right back where it was take the old crossover off it just unscrews and unplugs and mount the tube connectors in the in the cabinet right above it all you have to do is drill the 7 16 hole to pop these things through you can mount them right above the original uh, binding post and you can run a loop uh, from the tube connectors to the original binding post and then you can use either or. I always love it when you guys use one and then the other and you compare them because I love seeing those emails and getting those phone calls 
of all that excitement telling me how much improvement there was and how much cleaner it sounded sending the signal through the tube connectors and not through the binding post um, so run those through in a little loop and you'll get to a b those when you're done and plus you still need this to fill the hole anyway so you're not doing away with it you're just adding tube connectors in addition to so i think that pretty much covers it um, if you guys have any questions throw them in the comments section and it's good to be back thanks for watching please subscribe if you're not a subscriber that way you can see all the new stuff that we throw up and that's it for this week thanks a lot you guys have a good one